The following program is sponsored by Open Way Church in Cyprus. This is Walking Closely with God, a prayer ministry broadcast outreach of Open Way Church located in Bridgeland, Cyprus, Texas. Please stay tuned as Pastor Greg brings you biblical teaching from the Word of God, giving you clear understanding to help guide and empower you in your close walk with God. At the same time, teaches you to pray effectual prayers that bring answers and solutions to stubborn issues of life. The power of the Word is unveiled. As you stand on it by faith, you then start experiencing manifestations of the promises that enhances a purpose-driven life in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome to Walking Closely with God. The message this week is our God is able to rescue. And the Bible reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 17 and 19. I'm reading from the King James Version. It just read that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, world, who believe according to the working of his mighty powers, according to the working of his mighty powers. It means you have a prior knowledge of what God has done in your life, a testimony of how his power was made manifest in your life over a situation that the enemy had thought was going to just bury you. The enemy had programmed to eliminate you. The enemy had programmed to completely just take you out. But the power of God was made manifest to show to you. And it's this same power that the three Hebrew boys had a knowledge of. They had a knowledge of this God and this power. Not only so that the exceeding greatness of his power was made manifest to them. So when you as a child of God have this revelational knowledge from prior experiences of what God has done in your life and you are solidly ingrained in this truth that he is your heavenly father, then you always come to a place of rest and certainty no matter what you are confronted with because we serve a God that is greater and stronger than all. A God that is higher than any other God is the healer. is the God with awesome power. So when this God is for us, who could stop us and what can be against us? Is the God that turned water into wine. He opened the eyes of the blind. By so doing, he brought them out of darkness into light. Everything that represents darkness in and around our lives, God is bringing his light. And what is the light? The light is the word. For the word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet to light up our path. Amen. So when we are walking with the light, it says the path of the just shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. So we rise up from the places of ashes into beauty. There is none like this God because the Bible says his word is forever settled in heaven. Once have I heard, twice has it been told that Power belongs to this God. So the three Hebrew boys, they knew this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew this truth. And that's why they stood boldly, confidently, before Nebuchadnezzar and tell him, listen, we are not going to bow down. We are not going to bow down because the God they serve stands with us, stands for us, holds us, and is solidly behind us all the time. Is always by our side. This God reigns forever and is our friend. Why is he our friend? Because we keep his commandment and obey them. So we are his friend. Our strength is in his name because he says the name of the Lord is a strong tower for the righteous to run in and be kept safe. And in the place of safety, you are in a place of strength and power, dominion and authority. We are never alone. Only this God can deliver and the victory is already being won for us on the cross. So nothing formed, no evil assigned, no program from hell or projected against us shall stand because this God we serve 
holds the whole world in his hands. He said, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof, and everyone that dwelleth therein. So as we continue to hold on to the promises faithfully, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. Amen? He, we know he hears us. So daily when we wake up with songs of praise, even waking up to situations that is chaotic, even waking up to that financial distress, even waking up to that marital challenges, even waking up to that career problems, even waking up to that health issue. When you wake up every morning with a song in your mouth, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. When you sing a song like that to encourage yourself, lift up your spirit, man. You will find that the, the overwhelming situation, the marital issues, the financial challenges, they become pale. They become insignificant because what you have exalted God. Telling God this day is going to be a day of joy. It's going to be a day of gladness for you. So we know he hears us. And this God, by divine help, has crushed the enemy underneath our feet. Because this God is our sword and our shield. When we go into battle, we don't need to fight. He is our sword. He is our shield. He says, stand still and see the, the deliverance of the Lord. The Egyptians you see today, you shall see them again no more. Amen. And that was what happened in Babylon. A decree went out that everyone should bow down and worship the image of King Nebuchadnezzar whenever they hear the sound of the of the trumpet. So the Hebrew boys, they just knew that was an insult. You know, they had made up their mind they were not going to bow down. So the king was told about it and he asked the boys to be brought before him. They came before him and the king said to them, listen now, you guys. Hear this when you hear the sound of the horn and the pipe, you should fall down and worship the image I have created. Then everything will be well and fine. But if you do not worship, then you shall be thrown at once in the midst of the furnace of the blazing fire. And what God is there who can rescue you out of my hands? And the Hebrew boys they responded. In Daniel 3, 16 to 18, Amplified Version, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king and said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> what are you talking about? We don't need to answer you on this point. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to what rescue us from the furnace of the blazing fire. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. So you are just kidding. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to what? Serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. That was boldness. That was confidence. That was trust. That was faith. That was a knowledge of its exceeding greatness. A knowledge of God's exceeding greatness. In power. That was a knowledge in the God that they served. And what happened? The king was enraged. He was enraged. You know? And he said, he commanded the fire to be turned up, the heat turned up three times than, you know, the normal uh, pressure. And they bound up these, these boys, tied them up. Their garment, their coats, and even their hearts threw them into the burning furnace because the king just wanted the memory, the remembrance of them completely incinerated, wiped out. That you don't have a memory, these boys ever, you know, existed. So sometimes we are confronted with situations, you know. The spiritual realm and the and is watching us. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness is watching us to see which way are we gonna tilt. Which way are we gonna tilt? 
Which way are we going to tilt? Are we going to tilt and compromise? Are we going to tilt and glorify God? So just as the three Hebrew boys, they were bound up and thrown in the fire. Scripture said after a while, the king was astonished and amazed. He rose up from his throne when he saw that the boys, they bound up hands and feet, were walking around in the fullness of fire. Not only that, he saw the fourth person who was the king of kings, the consuming fire. So Jesus, as a consuming fire, consumed the blazing heat in the furnace and kept the three Hebrew boys in an air-conditioned space. <laughs> in an air-conditioned space. The king was astonished. He was astonished. And he declared, he said, the fourth person is like the son of God. Oh, <laughs> Oh, king, so you knew. <laughs> so you did know that Jesus is the son of God. Oh, so you did know you just wanted to mock these boys. Oh, so you did know you wanted to test their faith. Oh, so you did know you wanted to see if they would bow down to your God and dishonor their own God. Oh, so you did know that there is a God and he has a son called Jesus. He said he looks like the son of God. In haste, he came close to the mouth of the burning furnace and called forth the three Hebrew boys to come out of the furnace. To come out of the furnace because they had proved him that, listen, we have a God that is bigger than you, O king. We have a God that is awesome in power. We have a God that reigns. The God that stands by us. And if he stands by us, if he is for us, what can be against us? So Apostle Paul tells us, he said, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, if God be for us, who can be against us? And they proved the king that point. They proved it solidly to King Nebuchadnezzar. If God be for us, O king, we are not what we are not careful to answer you in this matter. And they, they proved to the king that listen, when you stand in integrity, when you stand for God, God will rise up from his throne and Take over the battle for you. When you stand and not compromise and say, Oh Lord God, for you, I would rather die. Just like the book of Philippians tells us, he said to live is Christ and to die is gain. When you look at it, it's a win-win situation. You are faced with a compromising situation, but you choose to stand with Jesus. You stand choose to stand for Jesus, it is gainful. It is gainful. It is rewarding. It is rewarding to stand for Jesus. So they brought them out and those people that had ganged up on the three Hebrew boys to go report them to King Nebuchadnezzar, they were also around to see the king astonished and amazed that the fire had no effect on their bodies. Their hair was not singed. Their clothes were not scorched or damaged. Even the smell of smoke was not upon them. And because of that, a whole nation, because these three boys, they stood for God. They stood and declared their faithfulness, their allegiance and loyalty to God. The king declared and said, Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language that speaks anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces, and their houses made a heap of rubbish, dung, for there is no other God who is able to save. In this manner, then the, then the king made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper in the province of Babylon. My brother and my sisters, people will want to tempt you. People will want to see where you stand. People will want to know, are you truly a believer, a Christian, or you are just, you know, one of those uh, uh, people that just say, I'm a Christian, and meanwhile, when situation occurs, you are, you are quick to, to, to turn on a dime. You are quick to change your belief. No, we should stand and stand for God. Even in good 
in bad and ugly situation. Stand and let your allegiance be known. You must stand for something and not fall for everything. That is what they did. They stood for Jesus. They didn't fall. They said, if God does not, if he doesn't save us, we are not going to worship your, 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 your God. We are not going to bow down and worship your God, O King. So, faith is not based on physical or visible circumstances, but rather the confidence in the spiritual realities that are found in God's words as promises. In so doing, when we stand like they did, the three bull boys, our relationship with God grows deeper because we see God exceeding greatness in power arise to, 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 to take over the situation confronting us. So as believers, we must focus our faith, our trust, not in the present, present, you know, issues, but also our faith, not also on faith itself, but our faith should be fully on God. That is, don't look at the situation. Don't look at the strength of your faith. The Bible says, even if your faith is as little as a monster seed, you shall say to this mountain, be that removed. But sometimes we look at our faith as insignificant, not able to. Then, then don't look at your faith. Look at your God. Look at the God that you are serving. This is what they did. They say, our God. They didn't say, our faith. The three Hebrew boys say, our God, not our faith. So they looked unto God, not unto man. Sometimes whatever we are believing God for may not happen immediately or at other times it may happen, but our faith in God, we have this confidence that our prayers has been heard. And in his perfect time, he will respond with answers and make all things beautiful because we know in whom we have believed. So to you that has been praying and yet to experience a meaningful testimony, I come to encourage you, just let your prayers be gathered in a bowl and presented before God. Sooner than you know, he will set to you in his own time and in his own season as ordained for your life. For our God is faithful, he's never been late, he has never disappointed, and he's always on time. He's always on time. He has never failed. Amen? So what's the takeaway today? The takeaway from this message is that we are never alone. Even while in our secret place, the forces of darkness and the kingdom of darkness, they are both watching us. You know, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are both watching us. The spirit realm sees every decision, every action, every thought process. They know it. So it is up to you now. When you stand, are you going to choose for God like they did? Or you are going to choose for the kingdom of darkness by compromising? The choice is yours. Will you compromise? Will you take the easy way out and let the enemy start to mock our God? Or are you going to tough it out? And stand and wait on God. No matter how desperate and urgent the situation is, we must stand and declare like Esther did. If I perish, so be it. And it was the same decision they made, the three Hebrew boys. They say, if he does not save us, so be it. But we are not going to bow down and worship. We are not going to compromise. We are not going to choose the easy way out. We are not going to mock our God. We are not going to let the enemy sneaker and say, Oh, we thought you were Christian. Because King Nebuchadnezzar recognized, he said, The third person is like the Son of God. They know that you are serving God, but they want to see, Are you really, truly serving God? Or you are just a mouthpiece? That is making noise back and forth. That I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, you know. But they want to see it in your action. When push comes to shove, when the tire hits the tarmac, are you going to stand or are you going to cave and fold and give in? That's what the world wants to see. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, no evil formed against you. No projection, no evil program shall stand because we serve a God who has the whole world in his hand. We know this God has crushed the enemy underneath our feet. 
because he is our sword and our shield. Even though darkness is surrounding us, the enemy is coming at us with everything. He will not be able to overwhelm the light of God in our hearts. What is the light? The light is the word. Because it says, light cometh in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. So it says the light is the lamp upon our feet. And that is the word of God. You know, you become incomprehensible when you hold on to the word of God. It says, when you keep my commandments and you do them, you are my friend. And when you are his friend, the, the kingdom of heaven and all the resources are made available to you. When you sneeze, an angel is there real quick with a, with a cleanness to mop your nose. When you cough right there, they are there with, a, with these uh, pills for you to put in your mouth to clear up your truth. So it is when we stand for God, we become light. Darkness may try, but they will not prevail. So if this God is for you and I, you know, what can be against us? Apostle Paul said, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, what can separate us from his love? Is it tribulation? Is it tragedy? Is it sorrow? Is it, is it affliction? Is it oppression? Is it that marital challenge? Is it the financial challenge? Nothing can be against us if God be for us. For he will cause all things to work together for our good eventually. Because we love him and we are in his purpose. We are in his will. We are in agreement with him. We are working with him in alignment concerning his mandate, his purpose, and his plans for our lives. Amen? So, I want to encourage you, continue to choose for God. Because the choices you are making today can affect your, your family, your community, the organization where you work in, a whole city, a whole town, a whole nation, a whole territory. And that's what happened. Because the three bull boys, they stood King Nebuchadnezzar made a decree over the whole nation, the whole kingdom. So I want to encourage you, you under the sound of my voice, walk closely with God. Amen. But you that don't have a relationship with this God, I've just talked about through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to a deep, meaningful relationship that can alter, that can alter your life here on earth and in eternal. Amen. Please repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life. I confess of my sins and I repent of them. I thank you for forgiving me and washing me of all my iniquities and unrighteousness. Thank you for writing my name in your book of life as one of yours. And thank you for being my Lord and my Savior from this day henceforth. If you have made that declaration, welcome into the kingdom of God. The next thing you want to do, get yourself a Bible, which is our roadmap. Because you've embarked on a new journey and you need a roadmap. And then join a church where they will help you explain the roadmap for you. As for us, we are still virtual. We've not gone back to in-person fellowship. But you can check us out on Facebook, Open Way Church Bridgeland. And on YouTube, Open Way Church Bridgeland. And you can also reach me at 832-916-8413. You know, in case you need prayer, you just need me to agree with you concerning an issue, or you just want me to encourage you, I am available. Thank you for joining us this week. And uh, I hope this message has blessed you. Please help us share it, share it. You know, you don't know who is going through a situation, confronting a situation now that they need an encouraging word. Please help us to share. Amen. We love you. Jesus loves you. I'll be with you again next week. Shalom. Thank you for listening. This program is made possible by support of listeners like you. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner or making a one-time donation? Your support helps us continue providing these teachings to minister, encourage, and bless the body of Christ across the landscape of this great nation and nations all over the world. To donate or to learn more, please visit www.openwaychurch.com. You can also join us for Bedtime Prayer Fellowship every Monday and Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. through 8.45 p.m., streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, www.facebook.com slash openwaychurchbridgeland or www.youtube.com slash openwaychurch. Our prayer for you 
is that your faith grows stronger and your walk with God grows deeper because there's victory in Jesus Christ.